Hi friends and welcome to my channel English Fluency Lab where I help you improve your English language skills. My name is Sanjay Ahuja and I'm a communication coach. Friends in this video I am going to talk to you about newspaper English and how it is very different from spoken English. Now before I take you to my screen and explain to you that how newspaper English is very different let me first of all talk to you about this myth which many people have about newspaper English. Now I have heard many English language teachers and trainers telling their students that if you want to learn english read the newspaper daily now i have nothing against these teachers or trainers but my advice is exactly the opposite friends if you are at a beginner level and you are learning english please do not read the newspaper please do not read the newspaper to learn english and why do i say that i say that because newspaper english is grammatically wrong yes newspaper english is grammatically wrong why because the space is limited newspapers have to convey information in a very limited space and that is why things like verbs articles and prepositions are missing at some point of time and when you are a beginner you are taught that verbs articles and prepositions make a correct sentence so you tend to get confused when you see that these things are missing in newspaper english so hence i would advise that if you are at a beginner level please do not read the newspaper now let me take you to my screen and understand let's understand how newspaper english is different and why you should not read newspaper english at a beginners level let's go so let's understand how newspaper english is very different from spoken english now the first thing which you need to remember which i already told you in the introduction that because space is limited in newspapers articles prepositions and verbs are often omitted from headlines now when you are learning english at the beginners level you are always told that a correct english sentence will always have articles like a and an prepositions like in on at and auxiliary verbs but in newspaper headlines these are missing and this can be very confusing to an english language learner let's take a few examples now the sentence in the yellow is how you write in the newspaper and this is the correct one man injured in accident now if you see the article a uh, the verb was is missing right because space is limited they have taken off the article and the verb it's an inc grammatically incorrect statement but you understand what they are trying to convey second expert claims cell phones dangerous now an expert claims that cell phones are dangerous this is how newspaper write the correct sentence is this one the article an is missing the verb are is missing but because they have to shorten it this is the way they write in newspapers minister caught in scandal the home minister was caught in a scandal that's the correct statement the verb was the verb was is missing the article er is missing right so that is the first thing which you need to remember about newspaper english that articles prepositions and auxiliary verbs are often omitted from the headlines let's move on to number 2 now to add action and urgency verbs are often in the present even when an event has happened in the past now what newspapers do is that even though the event has happened in the past the sentences are always in the present because they want to add that action and urgency let's understand this local woman wins rupees 50 lakhs in lottery now this event has happened in the past the correct one is a local woman has won rupees 50 lakhs in the lottery right okay but this is how newspapers will write it they will always write it in the present president visits africa the president visited africa recently right the visit may be over but newspapers will always write it in the present so that is the second thing which you need to remember let's move on for events in the future headlines often use to plus base form of the verb instead of will or going to now if you are at the beginner level and you are learning simple future tense you are always told that you should use the verbs will or going to to convey a future tense but newspapers don't do that right they use a different sentence let's understand president to visit asia the president the correct one is the president will visit asia in the future right president to visit asia so they use the to plus the base form of the verb because if they use will or going to the sentence will become very long right so their way of conveying the simple future tense is also very different let's take another one apple to reveal new iphone on friday the correct sentence is apple will reveal the new of iphone on friday but then this is a long sentence this is a shorter one okay so this is how the simple future tense is conveyed in newspapers and hence it can get very confusing if you are at the beginner level let's move on finally headlines use strong simple words rather than longer or vaguer expressions for example police probe corruption claims right the correct sentence is the police are investigating corruption claims 
Now, which sentence is shorter? Obviously, this one, right? They use short sentences because they want to convey the message. As I told you, that the space is limited. So these are some of the things which you need to remember. That which is different about newspaper English. And hence, I say that if you are at the beginner level, please don't read the newspaper. Let's understand a few other things. There are also some words you already know, but which may be used in new ways in a newspaper. For example, back. Back is a verb. V stands for verb, and it could mean support. Senator backs proposed immigration reform, immigration reform, which means that he supports it. Blow, blow means disappointment or setback. Injury, a blow to athlete's Olympic dreams. That means the athlete had had an injury, and all his Olympic dreams were shattered. Right, so that is the meaning of blow, which is a noun. Curb, a verb, which means restrain or limit. Government to curb spending, which means to limit spending. Let's move further. Hit, which is a noun as well as a verb. Hit could mean badly affect or reach. Snowstorm to hit northeast, right? That means it has not yet come yet, but it's going to hit there. Temperature hits record low, right? So this is the way you use hit. Press for, press for means insist on or demand. Residents press for better local schools. When you say press for, it means that they demand. Let's move on. Slam. Slam is a verb which means criticize severely. Singer slams rival's new album. When you say that somebody slams something, it means you criticize something. Now this is a very common word which is used in the media and the newspapers. Spark. Spark could mean cause or produce. The minister's comments have sparked a debate on reservations. Right. So spark in newspaper English means it could cause or it could produce. Right. The minister's comments have sparked a debate on reservations. Let's move on. In headlines, you might also see completely new or less common words. Right. For example, clash. Now, clash can be a noun or a verb. It could mean argument, conflict, or fight. Police clash with protesters. Right. You must have seen this on television that when people are protesting, they kind of attack the police. Okay. So that's called police clash with protesters. Coup. Now this is this the P is silent in this. It's called coup, right? Revolution, force change in government. Angry citizens calling for coup, which means that they want to overthrow the government. Another one, go ahead. It's a noun. Go ahead means approval or permission. Chief minister gives go ahead to expand highway. So when you give the go ahead for something, it means you give the approval for something. Let's move on. Hail, hail means celebrate or acclaim. World leaders hail new treaty. That means they, they are in for it. They support that. So hail means celebrate or acclaim. Loom. What do you mean by loom? Which is a verb. When something when something threatening is approaching, right? Prospect of economic crash looms. That means it is going to come. All the indicators are saying that an economic crash is going to happen. That is the meaning of the word loom. Mob. Mob is a noun. It means mafia or uncontrolled crowd. Mob vandalizes downtown stores, right? Vandal vandalize means that they have kind of set the store on fire. They have looted the store. That is the meaning of vandalize. Okay, so that is the meaning of mob. Ordeal. Okay, please be careful of the pronunciation. This is called ordeal. It's a noun. Unpleasant experience. Kidnapped man traumatized by ordeal, right? So he had a very unpleasant experience. Let's understand more. Sore. Sore means increase dramatically. Unemployment soars in July, which means that it has gone up. Wu. Okay, please be careful with the pronunciation. This is called Wu. It's a noun. Misfortune or problems. Public transportation Wu's anger residents, which means that the problems of public transportation have made the residents very angry. Now, this is a very common term used in newspapers. So, friends, if you have learned something new, if you think this video has added value, please subscribe to my channel. Please do press the bell for more videos like this and uh, do let me know if there's any other topic you want me to cover in the, in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to produce or to make a video on it. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.